It's going to record. Recording in progress. Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome to our look at 2022. I'm here with Dorothy Morgan. And Dorothy I'm here Morgan's with here. Nan- and I'm here with Nancy Jean. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> what an occurrence. And um, we just decided to take kind of a broad brush look at 2022. Mm-hmm. And Dorothy's going to tell me which planets I need to ask her to pedal fast or make them move. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I might and, be able to read their signs, but I don't know if I can make them do anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, know. I used to have a friend. She'd call me up. And she goes, is there some damn planet on me? Can you move it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have people ask me that all the time. It's like, yep. <laughs> and no, I can't move it, nor can I change your cards, nor can I change your crystals. But we're going to talk crystals. We're going to talk astrology mm-hmm. and Dorothy brought something up to me the other day that I think is really important and I'm going to let her talk about it but yeah. we really don't need to be doing our resolutions on the first right we need to wait till the new moon and I'm going to let her explain all that away exactly right now. I'm going to explain it so you know plenty of people even people who aren't in the metaphysical world you know everybody says new year's resolution and you know this time of year it's the today at this recording it's the last day of 2021 And so, you know, we're, you know, we're looking at, you know, what am I releasing? What am I letting go? You know, that, that song, O Lang Syne, it's about Mm -hmm. releasing the past so we can move forward. And I mean, it is a calendar year and that's important to celebrate, which is fine. However, don't just hang on just a day or two. It doesn't usually happen this, this, uh, this close to a new year, but uh, we have a new moon and, um, I know plenty of people who don't even do new year resolutions, but anyways, the new moon is, is when the lunar phase is what we should be paying attention to as opposed to the calendar year. So mm-hmm. if you're in, you know, if you're into these things, if you're watching us, you're into something. <laughs> um, if you're into these things, I mean, it is so important that you get a lunar calendar because to me, that is that's what really is the important uh, process to look forward to in regard to, you know, new year resolutions, right? I mean, there's been times in the past where we've had to wait a couple weeks into January before we have a new moon, but this year we're, you know, we're fortunate. So from, you know, any of the time, if you listen to this before the new moon, which is on January 2nd, uh, Eastern time, it's at 1.33 p.m. on Sunday, January 2nd. So adjust according to your time zone, okay? So any time after that is beautiful, perfect for writing out those intentions and, and setting those goals. However, to set goals, you need space. You need room to bring in something new, to start a new pattern or a new habit, whatnot, So, and this is how we, this is what we should be doing. Usually it's around two days. It's approximate. It's called the balsamic lunar phase. It's the Mm -hmm. final phase before the new moon. And when we're in that lunar phase, that's when we, it's important for us to go within, spend time alone, however that looks to you, contemplate, release, surrender to what it is you want to let go. So it coincides with December 31st and January 1st and half of January 2nd, where we can release, let go, do the the rituals that you like, whatever it is important for you, whether it's taking a bath and releasing everything and it goes down the drain, burning, saging, whatever your process, do what's comfortable for you. I can't tell you what your process is. Everybody's Mm -hmm. different. I mean, we can always make suggestions, but everybody's different. So follow that process, follow that process and allow yourself to write things out, burn them, whatever you want to do, <clears throat> be safe with your burning. Um, and, and I mean, yeah, you know, and who, excuse me a sec. Sometimes I talk too loud and I strain my voice. Um, take your, take your time and process. And right. then for a really good thing, I'm going to recommend you get a lunar calendar or find the, you know, some app that will tell you when is the new moon and when is the full moon mm-hmm. Again, at the full moon, not before, before is about releasing. So at the new moon and until the full moon, the waxing lunar phase, this is simple to check. It's just really easy in any calendar. 
is when you uh, bring things into your life, you mm-hmm. initiate new action. If you watch me here on YouTube, subscribe to our channels, please. Um, mm-hmm. If you watch us here on YouTube, I mean, I put up a new moon and a full moon forecast every month plus additional content that I feel is important. And I will tell you how to use the new moon every month and when it is, if you if looking at a calendar, it gets just too complicated for you. And so the releasing is after the full moon while the moon is in a waning phase and that goes on for a couple of weeks. So it's a small cycle, the lunar phase. There are bigger lunar cycles, which we won't talk about today, but this smaller phase um, is important. So if you were to check back in calendars, in calendar years, when you set goals that you never accomplished or didn't go anywhere with them, there's a pretty good chance that we were in a, a waning lunar phase at that point in time. So this year we don't have much time to wait and we get this new moon in Capricorn, which is about logic and stability and Mm -hmm. feeling feeling safe and secure and we recommend Mm -hmm. those are the things that you focus on what makes you feel safe and secure even in this crazy messed up world what makes you feel safe and secure and so that's that's just um the little tidbit that's what you and i were talking about the other day something i just wanted to bring up that i thought would be uh kind of fun to go back and forth so on to right. you. And one of the other things you can do for resolutions is it's really hard to say today I'm changing my world. You know, I'm going to write it. So um, and I'm I did not come up with this. I, I got it off serious keto. So go see Steve if you want to hear about his part of this. But a year ago, he came up with this thing where he would pick one habit he wanted to get rid of and one habit he wanted to start. Yeah. And he did it every month. Now we could time it to the new moons, what you want to build up and then, and the full moons, what you want to let go of. So you don't have to do them all at once, but, and then you kind of test, you kind of give the habits test drive. Mm. And one of the things he had put on his first time was he's going to take cold showers because there is something physiology, the physiology of your body is, it's better to take a cold shower. Apparently, my body did not get the message. I can't take it. <laughs> I would if when I'm camping, when I'm camping and, and we yeah. have outside showers, it's just like, it, it's like, oh, that's good. And when I'm right. camping, it's usually hot as the Dickens anyway. So. so you don't care. But it's, you know, anyway, but it, that was the one he picked the first month. And then I forget what the other thing was. But you just do it in little chunks that are usable, you know, yeah. and and he found out that he actually does feel better when he takes those showers, when he ends a shower that way. So he's continued to do it. He's had a lot, several other things. He kind of reports once a month what he's into that month for changing. Nice. And that makes some sense to me is a much better way to change and a much better way to put yourself forward. Yeah. The other thing that Dorothy and I are talking about is every year I pick a word Mm. that becomes sort of my word for that year. And last year, when I when I picked it, it was on this day a year ago. I said I wanted to go with the flow. I wanted to get in flow. And I did for about six, seven months. I really got Mm -hmm. in the flow and things just kind of came in and it was just wonderful. Um, But this year, my word is going to be frequency. And the reason I'm discussing frequency is because we keep telling everybody you're going through this ascension, you're going through these changes, vibrations are changing around you, you need to increase your frequency. Well, yeah, as sensitive as I am, I don't know whether my frequency sometimes is I know when it craters, but I don't always know when it's up. So I've been studying dowsing. So I'm going to be working with dowsing and working with frequency and however that word comes into my life this year. I'd like everybody to pick their own word. You can put it in the comments below. Let us know what your word is. Um, And it's just a good exercise just to start to sort things out. Yeah. Yep. And we have a fair amount of um, uh, planets in air signs, you know, especially Saturn Mm -hmm. and um, throughout the first quarter, especially of Mm -hmm. 2022. Um, I'm going to grab my video here, my, uh, my, uh, my notes, the first quarter of uh, 2022, we have um, a Saturn in Aquarius, of course, Mercury moves through there rather quickly. That's in March. And then we have um, 
connection between Mars and Saturn and Mars, Mars, Saturn, Venus, Mercury, all of these guys. This is the first quarter of March, Mm -hmm. um, in March, especially Saturn's already there, but the faster planets will move in later. And and that is, you know, frequency, that's air, that's the vibration Mm -hmm. frequency. And that's what in, in the sign of Aquarius. So that's what that represents. And so the first quarter and especially March and April, um, with some of these things going on, these planets are going through areas where Pluto is going to go to eventually in 2023, Pluto eventually moves into Aquarius, but we're going to get um, clues and hints about that um, starting in March, you know, what that looks mm-hmm. like. So raising our vibration, but raising our vibration, if we're looking at Aquarius, it's also humanitarian causes, right? What's mm-hmm. important for the world at large. And, and it has a ton to do with that. And it also has to do with uh, technology and our social connections with each other. So there's a lot of things that are really going to be um, making a a larger shift as we move through 2022 into Mm -hmm. 2023. Yeah. But right now, let's just look at the moon. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And your frequency, because that's a great word to use with the Aquarius energy that's, that's, you know, really hanging out with us this year. Very good. Okay. So that sort of covers the first quarter and Dorothy wanted me to bring in some crystals. So I do. I'm, yeah. And I love this stuff. I have, I have a ton of rocks and crystals, rock, tons of them, lots of different ones, but I don't play. What with I'm going to pull is I'm going to pull out of the crystal. Well, these, hmm. this is easier to see this oh, deck crystal, oh, crystal reading deck. cards Got it. and i'm going to just pull one and so this is a crystal this is a vibration this is a frequency for oh it's great it's hematite oh hematite is that grounding right it's grounding it's grounding and that's what we need to be doing we need to be grounding ourselves hematite has some fascinating uh forms there's uh it's it's a form of hematite it's called specularite and it's as black as that, but then it's got little white gemmy looking stones that are encased in it. Nice. It looks like it looks like a man-made object, but it's absolutely incredible. And you can only find it in northern Minnesota, I think. No kidding. But no, hematite right. is for grounding. And I think with the things that are flying around us in the universe, we need to, to do a little more grounding. Mm-hmm. And Yeah. And I realized the first three months of the year are not the time that in parts of this country where you want to go for a long walk, but you do need to get outside and touch, touch trees and stuff. If you can't get to the ground because there's too much snow between you and there, you can at least touch the things that grow out of the ground. I know in in the middle of January, February, I usually, (laughs) I, I have snowshoes. So and cleats. So I will walk because I'm in New Hampshire for those who don't know. And so it's pretty snowy mm-hmm. here and um, not yet though, but um, yeah, I'm always hugging trees <laughs> and people walk around the path and they see me hugging a tree and I'm like, Oh, I'm just a hug. <laughs> I need it's an around. old friend. It's an old friend. It's an old friend. Yeah. Yeah. In that first part of the year too, astrologically, just to connect in as well. Um, you know, we have Venus retrograde right now until the end of January. And so she will have us, you know, the first actually month or two, January, February, um, has a lot to do with connecting in relationships because it's all in the Capricorn mm-hmm. sign, the earth sign. So uh, Mercury is retrograde till February 3rd and Venus is until January 29th. And then they have to kind of move past their, the, the area that they were retrograde. So it will take all of February for us to get to a point where we can feel a little more like this forward movement, but officially from February 4th until April 29th, um, we have no retrograde planets. So this is a, a major forward movement. There's a lot of the Aquarius things happening, I, like I mentioned a minute ago, mm-hmm. meaning where we, you know we will have a lot of connections in that element of air. So a lot of fresh ideas, new mm-hmm. ideas, things like that. So there's a lot of positive stuff going on for those first few um, after the retrogrades are over. And again, all the way um, from February 4th until April 29th. And April 29th is when Pluto retrogrades. And I don't find that one is 
overly retrograde -y. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's, it's not like Mercury, which makes your phones go nuts and your car not start. You know, or Venus retrograde, which we have right now, which which is help, which is you know we evaluate we evaluating finances, Venus or money, Venus, or you know our relationships, Venus. What we value is changing. And mm -hmm. if you haven't had a, a shift in what you believe and what you value over these last two years, you're not paying attention. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, not, you're not. You're watching the old series, old yeah. TV shows and not paying a bit of attention. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So, yeah. Yeah. So what about that second quarter there, Nancy Jean? OK, let's see what I'm going to pull out from a stone for the second quarter. Um, and we're going to summarize the year in the garden. You guys okay. didn't think you'd escape without going to the garden, right? Go to the garden. Now, for the people right. in my channel that don't know what the garden is, it's something Nancy Jean has invented and created. You can see I channeled it. On, it. I you channeled it. it. You, well, you created it, too, through yeah, a channel. Right. Yeah, I did. It's, she'll show you, but it's if you look at the very left of her screen, it's that blue silky thing over there, and she'll show it to you when we get to it. So I'll show you. I'll to explain otherwise but i was going to say in last year in that period of time we also had a period of time from sometime in february on mm -hmm. that we didn't have any retrograde that's and that's when i channeled in both of the things i created this year yes that does happen okay. that does happen it doesn't happen always but we no. are in a in a few year cycle where we won't have any retrogrades yeah the no okay. retrograde period last year was was brief in January, but then it, it came back through in, um, yeah, it was the end of February all the mm -hmm. way until the end of April, pretty much the same time. Period. That's right. Yeah. Because yeah. that's when I channeled in the garden and the eggs. Good. Anyway, nice. this is what we got. We got selenite. Oh, perfect. That's so cool. Spiritual awakening. So that's the second quarter mm -hmm. is going to be spiritual awakening. Yeah. And um, so if you get grounded, then you can, you can awaken your spirit because. Nice. You can be ready for it to be woken up. Get woke. You go. <laughs> yep. It's white translucent. And so what we've gone from, we've gone with hematite was the first crystal we pulled. That's base. That's the base. Yep. Uh, then selenite is a crown. So we're kind of, our energy is going up and down us. And oh, nice. that's a good thing. That's a nice I, thing. I just, I use selenite a lot for clearing all my stuff. I actually have some mm -hmm. under my feet right now. I'm always sitting with a big, the big chunks, like the size of my arm. It's mm -hmm. right down here on the floor. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I almost always have my feet on it, but um, when I'm working, but yeah, I like it. Excuse me. Yeah. But we just have a lot of forward motion except for, then we have our next retrograde in May with uh, Mercury retrograde and Gemini, the retrogrades of Mercury this year. I have a video on that already posted um, on mm -hmm. the YouTube, my YouTube channel. However, uh, the retrogrades this year of Mercury, they start in the air signs, which is with thinking and thinking and mm -hmm. processing. And then they retrograde back into the earth signs, meaning, wait a minute, now I need to bring this into the ground. Because lots of times Mercury will retrograde in just one element in a year. Mm -hmm. But this year, the phase has it that it, it begins its retrograde in the early air sign and retrogrades back to earth. So bringing ideas and bringing them back down or old ideas, you know, finishing them up. And that's through the whole year when we have, cause we have, you know, the three retrogrades every year. Yeah. For those who are more aligned into Tarot, uh, air is like swords. Yes. Yeah. And grounding is like pentacles. Okay. So um, if you think about it, Pentacles are the only suit in the tarot that is actually physically in the world. That's the things you manifest, that whole suit. Uh, that's what it's about. <clears throat> but swords, <clears throat> despite being disruptive and, and things that you have air and thought. And so. Okay. You froze there for a second. So. Yeah. My, my internet says it's being unstable. <laughs> Louise. Okay. <laughs> All right. What's the next quarter? Let's keep going okay. before we go. So, so now we're, we've gone to through to June. So we're, we're going into summer, um, June, July, August, September, yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Um, let me see what, what that's we're going to put. That's the third quarter. That's the third quarter. 
I know I did a whole forecast the year ahead, but that's still for sale on my website. So um, I don't have things um, like itemized like you do here as far as quarters go, because I just sort of bring it all together month to month to month to month. So yeah, we have Saturn, Neptune, and Pluto retrograde. Oh, and really? Jupiter, and it's a Jupiter. neat card. It's called Numite. Oh, nice. Looks Another like an egg. Yeah. It's a healer. It's it's black and it has brown and white flecks in it. And it's a reasonably recent stone. It was found in Greenland and Newfoundland in the late 1800s. And then they found it in the Alaska gold country. It's up there. Wow. And um, it's a very powerful stone. I know people who have them. One of the women who reads her garden um she she throws new might into the garden i give you stones and tell you how to work with them but she has and it's it's a weird spelling it's n u u m m i t e cuz it's a i think it is native uh first people's word oh yeah so they they put lots of vowels and things yeah. um anyway so that's and it's black and gold and it actually covers all the chakras it's appropriate to all the chakras nice. yeah it really is that feels nice. cool that feels like a really nice stone it reminds me of um just yeah deep history yeah it's and i'll tell you it's the stone of the warrior and the shaman it supports your journey into your shadow self creating a sacred space to create deep wisdom mm -hmm. increases strength and endurance mm -hmm. assists in your journey of self-mastery and assists your uh, all aspects of love, including loving yourself. Because I think yeah. too often we got to go out and love people well. Love yourself. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that, you know, in, in, in a way, if we were to look at the eclipses for the year, this mm -hmm. year, the eclipses, there's four. Um, April 30th and May 16th are the spring eclipses, Taurus and Scorpio. And October 25th and November 8th, uh, Scorpio and Taurus. So mm -hmm. it's the Scorpio Taurus um, access this year. We'll have another one next year, and then it shifts to um, the Aries Libra. But anyways, mm -hmm. needless to say, these are fixed signs. So Earth, Taurus is the Earth, and the mm -hmm. Scorpio is the the transformation, the deep internal shamanic work, mm -hmm. or the deep transformation that you do. One is water. Mm -hmm. That's the feminine, the energy of mm -hmm. psychicness, if you will. And then of course the earthy Taurus and um helps us to to bring things in that are grounded so that is when um, when did the nodes move have they moved they just did a couple days just, ago okay that's, so they that's... they always they they their motion is 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 retrograde mostly and um they just shifted back in just a couple days ago so they're now yeah. at 29 degrees of scorpio and taurus and then, and then they'll do that for like 18 months. Isn't 18 that? months, 18 mm -hmm. months. Yep. And eight, it's actually is 19 months. So 18 and a half to nine, it's 18 and a half months. And so 19. And so, um, yeah, and that's typically, that's where the eclipses tend to run in okay. those, in those zones. They, you know, they'll, they shift out just a little bit at the very beginning and the very end, but, you know, we'll have um, six in six eclipses, we actually, I can't even state that because sometimes we have, we'll have six eclipses in a year. And um, I know, yeah, it depends Maybe. on how the planes it, it is because guys, the, this is where it gets into the astrology <laughs> that's making <people. laughs> the astronomy. This is the astronomy of it as well. Mm -hmm. Astronomy, mm -hmm. they are mm -hmm. they are one and the same, even though um, it's it's been it was divided by the church a mm -hmm. long time ago. But yeah, I know church okay so now where are we going here <laughs> thank you third quarter fourth quarter last quarter so um october november december okay um, oh petrified wood our ancestors wow nice and so after this year of where we get grounded, then we go up to our crown chakra, then we we start to heal, then we get to this wonderful, wonderful wood. And <clears throat> mm. petrified wood, its base also, it's crystallized wood, just exactly what it says it is. It's strong grounding stone, 
and very strong at centering, assists in connecting you with tree spirits to receive the deep wisdom, nice. awakens deep knowledge that lies within the blood and bones of your ancestry. So this is where some of that karmic stuff that, you know, because, you know, karma is not always bad. Karma can no, be it's, it's not. a lot it's, of good stuff we know. Karma and is karma. It, it is what... I owe you, you owe me, mm -hmm. we're here to learn about or to do or to pay back is it, you know, it's, it's used in a derogatory way, but that's not the truth of it. It's just like, you know, well, you know, karma's instant. Well, you know, good karma's instant too. So yeah, mm -hmm. I don't like it. When, yeah. I always have a little bit in my bonnet about that one. Yeah. With the, I think the flow, the way I see the crystals flow this year, we mm -hmm. start going to our base and getting grounded. Then we go up into the air and work with that. And then we have that healing stone in there. And then we get to a point where we've done enough of the shadow work, we've done enough of that sort of stuff, that we can come to terms with our ancestry and our frequency. And mm -hmm. that all has to do with, if your work, if you're a person who believes in and is working in ascension, mm -hmm. do you're uh -oh. you froze. I know you froze. You see, you say I freeze and I say you freeze. Okay. And once again, it says my internet connection's unstable. What why did you just, you, why what did you just tell me that before I say really good stuff? Anyway, those I know. four, <laughs> what was that those four crystals for crystals for your year yeah. um, would be uh, wonderful. And you can, none of those stones are that expensive you can get yeah. and they and none of them are actually uh stones that people forge you know there yeah, are nice. crystals yeah. that, people, that they die yeah. and do all other sorts of stuff too so uh mm -hmm. those are real real stones and they're real real things to work with so nice. that would be energy perfect all right to work with so nice i love it all right what's next what do you want to show us on the garden okay we're going to show you on the garden yeah it, I'm going to shift you to the garden, guys. Yeah. I'm the garden. Yay. I love it. And what we're going to do for the garden is the way the garden works is this is the thing I <clears throat> channeled in in February. And at the very center are the fire, water, air, and earth, just like mm -hmm. the four suits in the tarot. But mm -hmm. I, and I used the shamanistic view of this. So, Earth is where things emerge from. Water is where things flow out from. Fire is connection to our ancestry and to the past. And air is new thought. Dorothy mm -hmm. was talking about new thoughts that we're bringing in. And it depends on how things lay. So what I'm going to do is normally I cast five stones and they stand for body, mind, spirit, uh, grounding, and clarity. And I cast them in and then I read them in each of these spaces. And, he, and you say, well, who invented them? what the spaces say? I actually channeled that in on a Saturday. Um, I <laughs> he said, was so oh, casual I, about it. I channeled it in on a Saturday. <laughs> well, I, what happened is I said, you know, I'm throwing stones in this thing and I didn't have any definitions. And I was like sort of beginning to get things. And I said, OK, guys, I can't send this out to people without giving them better rule, better yeah. instruction. So. They sat my butt down and I literally started at 10 in the morning and got up at 2.30 that afternoon and I had typed out my whole, the oh, whole good. cheat sheet. Good for so, you. Good for you. Sort of like coming up with an astrology chart that fast with nothing mm -hmm. there before. Okay. So this is, and I'm going to use this. This is a really interesting stone. It's a fluorite and it's an oh, octahedron. I it's have one octahedron. just like that. It's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm going to use it because it's one of my favorite stones and it's green and green is for growth, which I hope this year will bring us. Yes. And so this is the crux stone. It's going to tell me how I have land by where it lands. So oh, landed in water. Right. So that's what we need to be getting rid of where, where things are moving that we're getting rid of. And so, so we're moving a emotion. We're moving emotion. We're moving emotion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then I take the other five stones. You go there. Um, and this is the body. This is the mind. This is the spirit. This is the clarity. And that's grounding. And that's where I use my little 
cheat sheet that I told you. I still use a cheat sheet because what happens, I'm going to start with the body and the body is between path forward and false. And the other thing you need to know about these spaces on this board is if you get the garden and you right now, my garden's on sale at my website, crystaldirections.com. And if you get a garden between now and the end of January, I'm throwing in one free sort of tutorial with me where I go over all this with you. Nice. But these are the cheat sheets, which you can see yeah. it's got these details. But when I when I channeled this in, then I had 28 days of visions of mm -hmm. where I would just wake up and I'd be in one of these spaces and I'd see the whole story. And I have all those written up and you get that too. So okay. path four, uh, physical feelings will uh, move you to your next step. So when you deal with your physical feelings and it and the false, when bodies and false, it says, listen to your body for feelings. Don't, it's go with your gut. Good. It's go yeah, with that yeah. instinctive gut feeling. That makes sense. So that's, that's how we're going to move forward. And then we've got the mind is in earth and final thoughts for this, for our situations are coming. So we're capable of generating them for ourselves. If we listen to our gut, just don't deal with it from our intellect. If we deal with it both ways, grounding. Oh, no, spirit. We're going to spirit. Spirit. Ah, spirit's in a great place. Spirit's in the sacral chakra space. And that means creativity. And when spirit's there, spirit is going to be inspired by new and creative energy. And that energy is actually. Um, th this this is this is a transformation that <clears throat> is going on right now. And a matter of fact, we've been transforming, mm -hmm. and it's about to come forward. So these things all tie together. So then, okay. grounding is in Earth again, which sounds like hematite to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's actually this is pyrite. Oh, uh, pyrite. You got it. Yeah. It's, oh, that's pretty heavy, isn't it? It's, it's like, yeah, it's really gold. heavy. Yeah. It's really, it's heavier. This little teeny tiny stone is heavier than this stone. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. They're just, that's the way they are. And more it's, we're in the middle of this transition. This says more is coming through. We have to, have to let our mind and our body connect and let our body, our gut instincts tell us where to go. Mm -hmm. And clarity is going to come out of our relationships with our past. And the clarity says, use ideas that you've carried out of your past. Remember, we said we're going to do shadow work yeah. and look at things we knew. This mm -hmm. is where this shows up. It says, use the ideas okay. you carry from your past and past lives to find out how you're going to move forward in this year. And that sort of ties together with all the stones we got. We're getting yeah, grounded, go up to the crown chakra. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and it works with this, uh, uh, the eclipses as well. Mm -hmm. There's always other things that help propel us forward or allow us to hit pause to figure stuff out. Um, however, yeah, that's the Scorpio. Yeah, that's the Scorpio of these eclipses and the lunar, uh, the lunar nodes moving through Scorpio and Taurus. It just helps us to, um, or encourages us to go through that transformation, right? Which, and which is fine. Pluto rules Scorpio, and again, Pluto's at the end of Capricorn now. It's conjunct the USA's Pluto as well. This March is, in, you know, February March is. What is it? Feb what is it? February twenty. It's the 20th? end of it's the end of February, early March, mm -hmm. and um, and that's again when um, a few other planets all come together. Um, at that point too, let me grab that chart for myself. Yeah, Mars, Pluto, uh, Mars, Venus, and Pluto are all conjunct at 27 Capricorn at the end of um, February, exact early March. And that is right on the United States, Pluto. And, mm -hmm. you know, we are, we are in a transition. We are in a big transition. It's been going on for a couple of years. If no, you hadn't noticed, mm -hmm. yeah. um, I mean, it affects globe, but this is us, the United States chart. And so, um, yeah, there are big changes coming in. It's going to take another couple of years before we 
um, even find any resemblance of, of what, what this, the base is going to be again. I mean, we're not, we're, we're, you know, we're already, there's so many people already in revolutionary mode anyways, just because whether Mm -hmm. it's, you know, people storming the Capitol or people fighting for, you know, the underdog or, you know, really, Mm -hmm. you know, being, being out there and really fighting for the disenfranchised people. Those are Mm -hmm. all Aquarius things. And those are all Pluto conjunct Pluto things. So you can, you know, it it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be, you know, the end of everything. It's not the end of everything. It's the end of a lot of things, but when things end, something else is beginning. So there's not going to be, there's not going to be a gap. It just looks really messy. It's like giving birth. It's a mess. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, mess, but it works. Well, I can remember two years ago when I, I was working, I worked um, New Year's Eve at Mm -hmm. times 10, two years ago, did a lot of 12 month readings. And it was so strange because Mm -hmm. I knew about the conjunction on January 12th of the big planets that are, if you watch that um, documentary on prime called the, uh, I've heard of it. uh, I haven't got there yet. Yeah. The pandemic, the astrology of pandemics. And if you really kind of want to see how you can work with astrology over time, that's a really good movie, but But people were saying to me, I said, you know, there's going to be this conjunction in January and we're not all together sure what's going to happen. But what I was seeing in everybody's 12 month readings was in spring, everything stopped or there was enormous upheavals or changes, in everybody's jobs. And I was like, oh, huh? <laughs> you know, what's going nice. on? Now and we know. Yeah, that was 2020. That was 2020. Yeah. And it was the last. Um party I did was for a guy whose birthday was January 12th. He was born under it. Mm-hmm. And, and when I sat down and read his cards, I looked at him and I said, does your wife know you're selling all your businesses? <laughs> and he said, no, and please don't tell her. Um, he said, I said, I'm going to break it to her gently. Well, I don't think yeah. he had a chance to break it to her gently because within yeah. a month of that, we were closed down. Yeah. It's no longer in yeah. The outer world business. Oh yeah, that was January tenth. Um, mm-hmm. January tenth, twenty twenty. I know I have three years of calendars in front of me here. Um, that was an eclipse at twenty degrees of Cancer. So mm-hmm. yeah, so that was you know home, home. I mean, of course, it impacted it's, everybody, but it was definitely home. Yeah, yeah. And it, you know, and you think about it, all the people who've had to change how their work goes. I mean, very, very. Things we thought we we like, I'm going to be in this job and I'm going to stay in this job. I spent yeah. last night talking to someone for an hour who had recently quit her job and is doing something else now. And yeah. she said, I'm having to learn how to rearrange my own time because yeah. now I'm responsible for me. Mm-hmm. I've been in that mode for so long. It doesn't strike me as odd, but I know, you know me too. Me too. Just being self-employed and, you know, yeah. doing this is what I do. And so. Um, yeah, so for us, it's one thing, but, but that's what we do. You know, I know I do, I know you do, and I know plenty of other people in our businesses and, you know, we, we help support others who are trying to find their own way and and can help them. I think that one of the biggest important things about the astrology is, is, you know, a straight, perfect stranger talks to me and I'm confirming things in their lives. And it's just like, there you go. So that should give you the confidence that you're right. believing in yourself and you're taking your steps and, and doing the things that you want and need, because again, it's all about our own choices and what we're focusing on. What's important to you. It doesn't mean mm-hmm. the outside world doesn't hurt us or impact us because it does, but we still are our own authority. And- well, and, you know, pick, pick what you want to work with this year, kind of, yeah. If you're thinking about a certain stone for a certain reason, Google it, yeah. put the metaphysics of and look and they'll and there'll be some contradictory things. There's some yeah. stones that you get into and they're like for everything. Yes, and, that's true. That's know, true. Well, of course, a, you use quartz for anything, but yes, um, I have a book of stones. I love that book. It's um, mm-hmm. it's pretty amazing. It's, you know, it's not like you can carry it in your pocket, though, because the darn thing, even no. the pocket version is like. Yeah, it's, I know it's the, it's it's a it's a cross book. It, yeah, it is. It sure is. I love it. But anyways, um, yeah. So to tie all this up, if we want, um, mm-hmm. you know, do something like your New Year resolutions, but in 
go ahead and do that, but look at the new moon, start doing it. Like Nancy Jean was saying and her keto friend there, you know, at the new moon, hit, do something new, write journal. I always recommend people journal. And if you don't know what you want to journal, like setting a goal, at least journal how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. because that's going to be important. That's important for other lunar cycles that are happening. And if you follow me, I'll talk about them in other videos, but um, like longer, it's a three-year cycle for another type of lunar phase thing, but mm -hmm. month to month, back to that new moon to full moon is when you want to invite new things or set goals, do rituals or whatever you want to call them based off of what you want to bring into your life and what you want to mm -hmm. increase. And then when we get to the full moon and get out those lunar calendars and, and do it to the day, to the time after the full moon, it's waning full moon mm -hmm. to new moon. That's when you start letting things go. You release what, yeah, you know what I did last, but that's not working. I'm just going to like back mm -hmm. burner it or just forget about it. And I'm just going to release that. And I'll spend a couple of weeks just sort of letting that go. Mm -hmm. I always it. say the new moon's like, it's dark and it's like a little seed and you plant the seed in that dark space exactly what and I'm then saying. it grows. And the same thing is you see you when you're in the full moon, you get the reflection of the sun. You can see what you've got. And then you say, do I really want to keep this? Yeah. And so let time it to harvest or if, it, if it's not working, then you just let it go back to seed. So, yeah, I, you know, I use that. I use the garden. I, I use a garden analogy all the time. Not your garden, but no, I use the garden, garden, the garden, the growing analogy all the time, because that's mm -hmm. exactly what it is. I mean, farmers for millennia have been using the lunar cycles for their That's plantings. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pull one last card for us. Okay. And it's going to be, I've, I've fallen in love with this deck. It's the secret language of color. Beautiful. And the colors are gorgeous. The illustrations are great. Nice. You know, and I, I really, with, really, I play with this deck all the time. Native spirit deck. Yes. That's it's, a beautiful deck. It's my favorite deck. I have it right here. I'm almost always, I pulled the same card three days in a row. So I think I really need to go into that card when we get done. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Let's look at that one. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it's the warrior. It's, um, it's, uh, it's, which one is it? It's, it shows a, a, um, okay. This is a great card for us to end with and looking forward to the next year. Um, as we are speaking today, I want to let people know that I was exposed to COVID and I was positive. I went yesterday to be tested and I should have tested out negative and I haven't. I've become a repository for the little crap. I'm a little plague monkey. Anyway, so what I have to do is apricot, rejoice and laugh. <laughs> oh, there you go. You just got to laugh color. about it, kids, because, you know, there's just not a whole lot else you can do. And it has a lot of vitamin C. <laughs> and it has a lot of vitamin C. And Hopefully um, as well, because those are all good for us and good for those viruses. But um, you're getting better, and that's what counts. So you might still be. Germy. Don't feel bad. That's yeah. what's so frustrating <laughs> is I don't feel sick. But apricot lightens any heavy, burdensome energy you may be carrying. <coughs> <coughs> to bring enormous vitality, joy, and zest into your life. Good, good, good. I love it. It's beautiful. Today is the day for rejoicing. Remind yourself that all the golden moments you've experienced in your life, find five joyful moments this day. Wear something with this color and say, divine spirit, please awake and joy, laughter, and spontaneity in my head and my heart. Nice. I love it. So, I, I, that's a great great deck. Yeah. anyway um thank you guys for joining us for new yeah, year's i don't know if we're we've thank helped you everybody you. i love yeah. it i love it i wanted anyway. to uh it's nice to have a collaboration i'm glad you're you're feeling better yeah you still got a good cough though yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> i will talk awesome. to all of you in the new year see awesome. you next year Blessings, bye -bye. everybody. namaste